right, thanks for watching. I hope these videos are helping you out. In this video, we're going to be talking about identities. So this is for the P1 Trig unit and uh, yeah, identities. I've got a little example here um, of what an identity is. Really simply, an identity is true for every value of the variable. So 2x plus 4, 2 brackets x plus 2, no matter what value I put for x there, the thing on the left is going to be the same as the thing on the right. So that's an identity and you can see I've used uh, this special equal signs with uh, not two lines but three lines. That means it's an identity. We know one identity already that tan theta is sine theta over cos theta, always. So there's one identity, it's written on the formula sheet, but uh, that's one you need to know. Uh, I just want to show you one more here. If you look at the unit circle down here, got a unit circle, the radius of the unit circle is always one. We discussed that the height as we go around is always the sine of the angle. And as we hit the circle, go down to the x-axis, that's always the cos of the angle. So that gives us this right angle triangle. A bit of Pythagoras, we get sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, which is our next identity. Uh, also, sine of theta squared, we write sine squared theta. So that's an important one to remember. So that gives us um, that second identity written down there at the bottom. So you're given both of these identities, it's just a matter of using them. Now, when are you going to use them? You're going to use them in the process of solving equations or proving identities, proving other identities. So this video, we're going to go through that second one there, uh, proving some other identities using these two here. So I've got three examples of that. The identity that we've just looked at can be written two other ways, and it's important to recognize these two other ways. As well as sine squared plus cos squared is 1, a bit of rearranging says cos squared is 1 minus sine squared, or sine squared is 1 minus cos squared. It's good to recognize both of those ones as well. Now, as we go through these examples, these are the kinds of things that I'm thinking about. So here's some tips. When we're doing these identities, we start with one side of the identity and try and make it look like the other. We can't take the identity and try and do the same thing to both sides to make them both match up. The reason that's wrong is because we're trying to show that one side equals the other. Multiplying both sides by two of an equation assumes that one side is equal to the other to start with. So it doesn't make sense to be doing the same thing to both sides, okay? Uh, secondly, look at the right-hand side, because we normally start with the left-hand side. So look at the right-hand side and keep in mind where you're trying to get to. So the right-hand side might just have cos in it, so that you know you need to make some replacements, so you just end up with cos terms in it. So keep in mind where, you're getting, where you want to get to. Uh, third and most important tip is you want to use your identities. If you see tan theta, change it to sine over cos. If you see uh, sine squared plus cos squared, that's 1. If you see 1 minus cos squared, that's sine squared. If you see cos squared, you're going to replace that with 1 minus sine squared. So using those identities. And the fourth tip here is a lot of the time proving these identities involves you adding fractions together. So once again, you have to have some good algebra chops here to add or subtract fractions together using a common denominator. Here's example number one. We want to prove that 1 plus tan squared theta is the same as 1 over cos squared theta. Alright, so as I've got in the start here, we can't solve this like an equation. We can't do the same thing to both sides. So I'm going to start with the left hand side, 1 plus tan squared. I'm going to replace tan with sine over cos. So tan squared theta, remember, is tan of theta squared. So this is sine, sine theta over cos theta squared, which is just the same as this. Alright, we've got two fractions here. We're going to add them together. Our common denominator is cos squared theta. 1 then becomes cos squared theta over cos squared theta plus sine squared theta over cos squared theta. All right, that's an important step there. Cos squared on, plus sine squared on the top is 1. So 1 over cos squared, which is what we want on the right-hand side. There we go. Done. Proved. Second example, tan x plus 1 over tan x is 1 over sine x cos x. Okay, so starting with the left-hand side, I've changed uh, tan to sine over cos and 1 over sine over cos. 1 divided by sine over cos is the same as cos over sine. All right, 1 divided by half would be 2. Yep, that kind of thing. So there's a bit of fraction stuff we've got to know here. Common denominator, we're going to add these two fractions together. Our common denominator is sine x cos x. Now, I ask myself the question, what do I have to multiply this by to get all of this down here? And the answer is sine x. So I've got to times the top here by sine x. So sine x times sine x, sine squared x. 
What do I have to multiply this by to get all of this? The answer is cos x, so I must multiply the top here by cos x. So cos x times cos x is cos squared x. Once again, the top simplifies to 1, and there's our answer. The third example here is much more like the ones that you're likely to get in the exam. There's two ways to do this. So let's look at the first way, which I think is probably the easiest. Uh, once again, we're going to start with the left-hand side and try and make it look like the right-hand side. So I want to get to 2 over sine x. Right, so what I've done first is recognize that I've got two fractions over here and I want to end up with one, so I'm going to have to add these two fractions together. The best I can do for the lowest common multiple is just multiply these two together. So sine x times 1 minus cos x. So I'm asking myself the question, what do I have to times this by to get all of this? And the answer is 1 minus cos x. So I've got to times the top line by 1 minus cos x. What do I have to times this by to get all of this down here? And the answer is sine x. So I've got to times the top line by sine x. Okay, giving me sine squared x. I expand out the brackets here carefully, giving me this and this, and I've still got the denominator, denominator the same. All right. So, what can we do here? Sine squared plus cos squared is 1, using our identity. So we've got 1 plus 1, giving us 2, minus 2 cos x on the top line. Bottom line still factorized. Okay, 2 is a common factor here, so 2 brackets, 1 minus cos x. So I've factorized the top line, and now I can cancel the 1 minus cos x's. They cancel out, leaving me with 2 over sine x, identity proved. The second way of doing this identity, I'll just throw it up here just to show you that this is a possibility, it's a bit tricky. What I've done is I've multiplied this second fraction on the left hand side by 1 plus cos x. Now the reason for that is I end up with 1 minus cos squared x on the bottom, this is a difference of two squares. Uh, end up with 1 minus cos squared x which is sine squared x which simplifies. So you can do it this way. Notice that multiplying by this doesn't change anything in this second fraction because this is actually 1. So just a, a weird and different way of writing the number 1. 1 plus cos x over 1 plus cos x. So nothing changes. I haven't changed anything by doing this. It just gives me a different form of that second part of the fraction on the left-hand left side. Okay? So I get sine squared on the bottom, the top sine x times 1 plus cos x. Now my uh, I can cancel here. Sine x over sine squared x is just sine x. And then the bottom line is the same. Now we can just add the top lines, which gives me 2. So just be aware that you can do that kind of thing in solving equations. There's often an easy way to doing it, but that is one thing that you can do.